Hey, this is Anthony with MakeWeirdMusic.com, and this is a really special video for me because Steve Vai lent me and my friend Ed his main guitar, Evo, for a little while to do some work on it. And in this video, I'll share about the, uh, the work that we did together. If you don't know about Evo, um, it's been Steve's main guitar since 1993 when Ibanez gave him four different prototypes with uh, different pickup models in them. And the one with the DiMarzio Evolution pickups, he wrote EVO for Evolution on the guitar. And uh, he fell in love with the guitar and has been playing it ever since. And a couple years later, I found out about the guitar um, and became totally obsessed with it. I got the 1995 Ibanez guitar catalog, which I still have right behind me. And I took it to school every single day probably in 8th and ninth grades, um, and I drew the guitar, I fantasized about owning it, I talked to my friends and family all about it, I mean, I, it was crazy how obsessed I was, and in fact, I still have an old drawing I did in 8th grade. That's of an Ibanez RG450, uh, because that was the closest thing that looked like a gem, that was still an Ibanez, uh, but was much more affordable. <laughs> anyway, I ended up pestering my family so much about it that uh, my grandmother and my parents and I pooled all our money together and we bought this Ibanez Gem 7 VWH, the same model as Evo. And it's scary to say this, but uh, now that it's 2017, this guitar is 20 years old. We got it in 1997 and it's a, uh, it was new uh, in 1997. Evo has been through a lot since 1993. It's gone through several necks and tremolo systems. The body was severely cracked in a touring injury. The knobs have been customized and swapped many times, but the alder body and pickups have stayed the same all this time. Coincidentally, my gem ended up having an accident with the neck uh, where it cracked. And when I got to work for Steve in 2002 and 2003, I was able to get my hands on a replacement neck it was a replacement neck for Evo, so this guitar is pretty special to me because it has one of his necks on it. One thing I've learned about Steve in the past 20 years of knowing him is that he's always looking for ways to improve uh, his craft. And after the uh, final show of the Passion and Warfare 25th anniversary tour in December 2016, I met Steve after the show and I introduced him to my friend Ed Heisler of Mad Hatter Guitar Products, which, uh, and we've interviewed Ed on the site in September 2016. I told Steve about Ed's patent pending uh, custom potentiometer design and what a huge difference in tone clarity it made in my gem. And Steve was so interested, he immediately offered us uh, Evo to <laughs> install Ed's uh, Mad Hatter Terminator system. Ed and I were like pretty freaked out <laughs> and uh, I joked to Ed saying it would have been preferable for Steve to hand us like a, a bag of cash because cash is at least replaceable <laughs> and when Evo uh, got when Ed got Evo to his house uh, I think he double checked his homeowner's insurance policy and uh, you know got a little nervous about keeping such an incredible instrument in his home. So before Ed installed the Mad Hatter Terminator SVST HSH system, he took note of the existing wiring configuration in Evo. Steve was using a push-pull volume pot configuration with a 331K ceramic capacitor modification that rolled off some of the low-end frequencies when engaged. Also, his tone pot had a Vichy Orange Drop 22 microfarad tone capacitor. Ed customized a Mad Hatter Yin Yang 500K push-pull volume pot by placing the ceramic capacitor in parallel with the pot. Let's see if you can see it there. Um, yeah. We have our grab. So we have our, our black terminal, which is our ground, and then we are two our red terminals. They are. Can you get it there? Oh, I see. You're pointing to the terminals on the uh, yeah. the green block there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. So yeah, the red terminals are the 500K, okay? Mm -hmm. And in the Terminator system, the red terminals are always gonna be 500K pot. Now blue will always be 250K. 
On this case, I have two green. What those two green are basically going to the push-pull pot. So when you pull on it, now you're, those two terminals are connected together. Oh, okay. So, so basically, and that's how Steve's was configured. That's how Steve was configured. Okay. Yep. He installed the Vache capacitor on the Mad Hatter Killer Tone dual value pot and wired it to 500K. He replaced Steve's output jack with a Mad Hatter Switchcraft output jack and replaced the existing 5-way CRL selector switch with the Mad Hatter Terminator 5-way CRL selector switch. The Terminator system design is solderless, so Ed connected everything to the appropriate terminals using the Mad Hatter Little Ass Screwdriver and gently tugged on all the wires once installed in the terminals to ensure they were securely attached. Before restringing the guitar, he used the little ass screwdriver to ensure the pickups and switch configuration were working as expected. Once it passed inspection, we restrung the guitar and demoed the new hardware. Yeah, there's actually, I think, clearer definition between the bridge and neck humbucker now, right. yeah, a lot it, more than before. It sounds really good. It sounded great to us, but um, really the only ears that matter were Steve's. Uh, so about a week later, Ed and I drove from Phoenix to Los Angeles and returned Evo to Steve in his studio. And he really loved uh, the new the, the sound of Evo with the new hardware. In fact, he said, uh, it's like you gave Evo a bigger set of lungs, and he specifically commented on the clarity of the mid-range frequencies um, on several pickup uh, positions, which was really cool. And Thomas Nordegg, Steve's guitar tech, was there, and he also was very impressed at the uh, clarity of the of the guitar uh, when Steve plugged it in. Ed and I had huge smiles on our faces for hours, and we kept bouncing back from extreme happiness to utter disbelief. <laughs> so it was really like an incredible day uh, for both of us. In fact, um, I mean, it's a huge honor. It's an indescribable honor for me to play a small part in the history of Evo because Steve's music and this instrument and Steve's friendship have meant so much to me over the past 20 years. I mean, he's played such a significant role in my life uh, for so long. Uh, so it was really, it's such an honor to <laughs> put this video together and to have had Evo um, to work on it. And also it was awesome getting to know Ed better. I mean, I've known him technically for a few years, but we've not interacted that much outside of um, the interview that I posted where he and I sat down for a good long conversation. So driving from Phoenix to LA with him was really cool. Um, and I got to know him better, and he shared some new weird music with me that I will definitely be sharing on this site. If you want to learn more about the uh, kit we installed, just go to madhatterguitarproducts.com and look at the Terminator system, the SVST HSH kit. Um, and be sure to email Ed if you have any questions. Uh, he's really accessible and uh, very friendly, super cool guy. 
um, and he'll help you out. And I don't know how to end this. <laughs> um, you get the idea. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs>